Problem 16 is looking at Q factors, uh, which we use to manage often single tree selection, maybe group selection, using a form of structural regulation uh, called BDQ prescriptions. Uh, we go over this in lecture 10. So let's start off by defining Q so we know what we're talking about. And uh, here Q is equal to N divided by N sub I plus one. This should be N sub I up here. So N sub I over N sub I plus one. So we've got subscripts, that seems a little confusing. What this really means, it's just the trees per acre in a size class divided by the number of trees per acre in the next largest class. So let me give you an example of what that may look like. Here's a diameter distribution. So my diameter distributions have dBH on the x-axis. I'm going to use English units. There's inches. Um, and we have stand density on the y-axis. Uh, we're using units of trees per acre there. And so if this is a balanced all age stand and uneven age stand, it could be characterized by what we call a reverse J curve. So our diameter distribution where we have more small trees and fewer and fewer trees as they get larger and larger, simply because big trees take up more space. And so in this scenario, I have 150 trees in the 11 inch size class. So maybe that's right here. And I define this as 150. And I have 225 trees in the 10 inch size class. So maybe that's right here, 225. I may not have drawn this perfectly, but you can get the idea. And so now if I want to plug in math to this equation, n sub i, so our 10 inch size plus is n sub i, 225. So q equals 225 divided by n sub i plus one, the number of trees in the next largest size class, 150. And this equals 1.5. It's unitless, it's just a ratio. So that's our Q factor on this particular stand. And so we assumed it followed reverse J diameter distribution. That's the Q factor that would characterize that diameter distribution. Now, let me show you a common error, the most common error people make. What people would do if they're making an error is do Q equals, they would just accidentally reverse this. They would do 150 over 225, and they would get 0 0.67. And that is wrong. You did it backwards. Like wrong here, so we know for sure. So to avoid making this mistake, you simply check your data at the end of each time you do one of these problems because Q falls between one and two. So Q should always move between one and two. So 0.67 was below one. It's outside of the range we would expect you to fall in. We know we did something wrong. Take a look at it. Flip your fraction. That's the most common error. Let's check our Q factor. We did arrive at 1.5. It's between one and two. That's correct. That's something that we would expect. So that's how you can calculate Q uh, from given diameter distribution data.